Hello, I'm Terry Stringer with Hydrology Studio. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add a background image and geo-reference it so that you can add coordinate-based river reaches and cross-sections in Channel Studio. You can also add background maps from uh, DXF, Land XML. Uh, you can also import a tin surface from which you can cut cross-sections. Uh, but today, I'm gonna to focus just on bitmap images. And these can be obtained from a variety of sources, such as Google Maps, for example. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to begin on our model tab and we're going to add a map by simply clicking on this background map button and selecting import background map. And then I can choose which file type. It defaults to land XML, but I'm going to select in this case, it's a JPEG image and I'm going to choose that, open it, and it will then populate your, your background with the map. Uh, one thing about when you choose your maps, you want to make sure that it is uh, not too large, but large enough, of course, to, to contain uh, all of your, your project. Our project is going to be mostly starting in this green area. This is a golf course, and so we're going to start uh, from this end over to this end. So you want to make sure that your map will contain that, but you don't want it to be too large to where you can't zoom into it. You can zoom out or you can zoom in, but you cannot zoom out beyond the original extent. So you kind of want to keep that in mind when you choose your bitmap. Uh, also, you can crop it, if you will, in, um, in Channel Studio. You can just zoom into it, go back to the map button and choose crop to the current extents and it will then so it will crop it the way it's shown currently. So anyway, this one's already been cropped, so it's ready to go. So uh, let's go ahead and, and geo-reference this. And we do that um, by, we're gonna be adding control points at the lower left and in the upper right of your map. And once those coordinates are put in, then the software will know where, uh, where everything is in reference to real world coordinates. So we're gonna um, add the first one by clicking again, the background map button and choose add geo-reference control point one. You're gonna go down to anywhere here that where you have a known point, and we have a known XY coordinate right at this point here from a surveyor's uh, PK now. But, and we're gonna go ahead and enter in the, the coordinate for that. We're gonna keep it simple. 100, 100 is going to be the, the coordinate point for that rather than use uh, very large numbers. We're just gonna keep it simple today. So we'll do that. Now it says add control point two. So we're gonna do that by repeating. Just go back to the map button, add geo-reference control point two. And I'm gonna go up here to this intersection where our field crews have a PK nail that has a coordinate on it. And it's going to be 2600 and 1100. And we're gonna click OK to that. And geo-referencing is complete. You will see these red dots where we placed our control points just to kind of give you um, some confirmation on that. And you'll notice down here in, this, in the status bar, wherever I move my mouse, it's gonna give you the real world coordinates for that. So that's how you add a, a bitmap background image. So let's go ahead and while we're here, um, start adding some reaches to it. And so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna zoom in just using my mouse wheel. I can zoom in and I can pan by just dragging my mouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and so we can start adding some reaches to it. So we're gonna start at the downstream end and work up and we're gonna just drag reach segments and I'm gonna follow this blue line which represents uh, the creek that we are going to be modeling. So I'm gonna click on the add reach segments button and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna begin at the most downstream point which is here. And the first segment is always straight. That gives the software the ability to at least get its bearing. So we're gonna do that one. And then I'm gonna just start to just follow this creek. And it doesn't have to be perfect but you're just gonna keep going around and adding segments to it and keeping that dotted line as your as a guide. So you want to keep it, uh, that leading dotted edge line is going to be your guide to keep you on track. If you get off of it like that, it's not going to work out for you because you won't get back on track. So you just want to keep that parallel and you can add up to a hundred segments. So you can just take it easy with it and just keep working your way around 
like that, like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to this and, and get that set up. And then I'm gonna move over so I can finish this up. And I'm gonna just do it, hit the reach button again. And notice it will snap to a, a red circle there. That lets me know that, it looks like I might've missed it. Going around, that one, this last curve, get that in, all the way to the end. And that's it, click OK to that, and now my reaches are in. And I'm gonna to click to zoom to extend so you can see what that looks like. It takes a little bit of time and you know, you'll get used to this, but it's really nice having a curved reach rather than a series of straight segments. I did wanna mention uh, that you can click on this reach numbers checkbox up here and it will number all the reaches for you. And if you click on one of them, it will show you the over here to the right, the easting, northings, the river station, even the, the length of that particular reach and you can just move up and down and uh, it will give you all the particulars of that. Also, you can make the reach width larger by moving this slider button at the top. So, and it's, it's cosmetic only, but whatever you like, usually something like this works good. That's the end of, of putting in the reach segments. And this is always a good idea to, uh, at this point, if you would like to save your file in case something goes wrong, you don't have to redo the reaches again. So at this point now, um, we will add in our cross sections. We're going to uh, do that by clicking on this cross section button over here, add new cross sections. And I'm gonna move my mouse just anywhere near this the reach that we put in and it will automatically add a section that is exactly perpendicular to to our reach and you'll notice that this uh, this cross section line has a certain length to it i can go up here and i can make them bigger if i want or smaller this makes it even larger uh, a little bit too large at this point but just to let you know eventually these these segments will be uh, the length of them will actually equal your cross-section data once that's been put in but for now it's just going to do this so i'm going to start at, at station zero and just click my mouse button and i'm just going to continue to move upstream and, and add more sections i did want to mention that there is a, um, a section number slider up here that if you want the numbers to be a little bit bigger you can do that as well and also, um, there is a station increment option. It's a drop-down list box that I can choose one foot, 10 foot, 50 feet, or 100. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna choose 50, because we're gonna be adding these about every 100 feet. This helps me to quickly add them at every 100 feet rather than try to, to dial in it just in one foot increments. This makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna do these every 100 feet. There's one here. I just continue to work my way around. Every couple increments is 100 on here. And I could set that to 100, but I just wanted to demonstrate that you, know, you can put these in however you like. The general rule of thumb is you want your reach lengths to be uh, equal to about five times the channel width. And in this case, but we're, we're, this is a small creek. It only has about a 10 foot wide bottom section to it. So we're gonna do these, try to do them about every 50 or 100 feet. And when I'm done, I click the okay button up here. And um, those are my cross sections. I did wanna mention also that it automatically inserts the, uh, while you're adding these in, these reach lengths over here like for example, channel thir or section 13, it automatically adds your, your reach lengths for you. And so that's, uh, even as you go around this curved section, it's going to add um, the actual reach length. So you don't have to come up with that, and that's pretty handy for you. That wraps it up as far as adding a reach and cross sections. Now, I 
I did want to go through this project with you with actual data. So rather than uh, torture you by watching me enter in data, I already have a project. And so I'll load that up. Uh, we'll go through that. And here it is. And you'll notice that the, suddenly these, um, these sections turned white, the background turned white. That means that they, are, they do have data associated with them. You'll notice that these little dots in here, that, that represents the overbank station. So if I click on cross sections and start going through these sections, you'll see these green lines, the vertical lines, that indicates my overbank. So there's a particular end value in the left overbank and one for the channel and one for the right overbank, which is what you see over here. On the model view, those little dots indicate where those green vertical lines are. It's just to kind of give you um, an idea of where that is. If you don't want them being shown, you can turn those off by clicking on overbank indicators. So now uh, let's go ahead and calculate these results. We have the data in, cross-section data is in, uh, the flows. We have three profiles, 500 cubic feet per second, 1,000 and 2,000. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate uh, or compute. And um, I'm just going to hit the Run button. And you'll notice then the, this reach has a blue line in it. That's just to tell you that the, the results are current. Let's switch over here to the profile. And you can see the profile of all this. Turn the energy grade line on and you can see that. Profile 2, I'll hit that. And you'll see it. the water surface elevation go up. But what's really important when you're working with a background image is that you can click on this plan and see what it looks like in real life. So what you're seeing now is a, an actual plan. I'm going to zoom in. And you see these, um, the green extents of this is, uh, represents the actual channel point. So, for example, section number 16, if I go to that, you'll notice that it's about 110 feet wide from zero to the end. It's 110 feet. So when you go to your plan, it's actually 110 feet from here down to here. So that's, uh, that's what the green represents. The center line that you see in here, it's dark blue line or the light blue line, that represents the reach that we drew in. These other lines indicate the overbank lines. So just to kind of uh, give you an idea of what, what those are and what they, uh, what they do, they're kind of helpful to know where they are. I can turn off these sections on the plan if I want, if, I'm, if those get in the way. I can also turn everything off and just show the water. So now you can actually view a, an image of the water, uh, the top width as you go along the reach. So let's go ahead and click on profile three and turn these back on. We'll hit profile three and you'll see the water surface, uh, the top width got a lot wider. And so what else can I tell you? You want to, when you go around curves like this, you want to make sure that you have enough cross sections so that you get a pretty accurate view. You'll notice that the overbanks are on e either side of the reach. If I were to delete 16, for example, I'll go back to the model and, and delete 16, recompute it, and go back to the plan. You'll notice that the reach has kind of gotten outside, and this became a little more um, granular, if you will. So that is always an indicator that you probably should have another, another cross-section entered in. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to undo that. I also wanted to uh, mention to you, uh, this is a new feature that was added to Channel Studio, which I really like, and it's called the Auto Overbank Reach Length. And it's a, a, a option up here on the Compute tab that you may have noticed when I was calculating. But what that does is it automatically calculates the reach lengths of your overbank. So typically you would um, just try to guess at what your reach lengths were on the overbank sections uh, that's out here. It actually should follow the centroid of the flow um, for both uh, the left and right. So unless you physically go out and measure it, 
you don't really uh, know what it is. You can guess at it. Uh, what's more is that it changes with the flow. So you see this profile here, it's pretty wide. And if I go back to profile one, it's narrower. And so the, the reach length of this overbank between 15 and 16 would be about to where my mouse is going back and forth here. But when you go to profile three, it's way out here. And so the reach length changes. And so unless you go in for each profile and change those reach lengths, you don't really know what they are. You're just guessing, but this takes the guesswork out of it. This is a really cool feature. And if you go say to cross sections um, on 16 here, you will notice that there's a little blue dot here and here. And that indicates the centroid of the flow. And so if you go back to the plan, you will notice um, that the, uh, the centroid is about here on, here on 16 and over here on the, on the right over bank. What it does is it measures the, the distance between these blue dots from one section to the next. <clears throat> and it calculates um, your overbanks. And you'll notice over here on 16, the left over bank is 78 feet, the channel is only 65, and the right over bank is even less at 58. But what's cool is that if you go back, say, to profile one and you hit run, these changes. Now, the channel doesn't change. It's not going to affect the channel reach length. That follows this blue line, which is the reach that we, we drew in. But the left over bank is 71 feet and the right is 60, which is different. If I go to profile three and run it again, you'll notice that they dynamically changed. So this puts your reach lengths on autopilot and it's a really cool feature. You don't have to worry about it. It's more accurate than just looking at it and trying to eyeball what these reach lengths are. It, uh, the software, while it's calculating, it finds out what the, uh, where the centroid is, recalculates it again using the reach lengths connecting those centroids. So that's a really nice feature um, I think that you'll enjoy using. You can always turn it off as well. If you don't want this to be used, you can just simply turn it off. Now, when you do that, the reach lengths that are currently in place, the 78 for the overbank in this case, and say 58 for the right, it, those will stay. It's not, they won't change. And so you can go in and edit them if you want and change it to whatever you like, and it will stay that way. But if you go back to the auto and hit run again, it's going to recalculate everything for you. I recommend that you, um, unless you really know what those reach lengths are, I would keep it on the auto. It's a really nice feature, and I hope you enjoy using that. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me, and thanks for choosing Hydrology Studio.